Introducing the D'Addario Auto Lock, made with locking strap ends for an easy to use clip on system. When you're done, just pull the latch and slide it off. Keep your guitar on lock with the Dario Auto Lock. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we have Citizen back, which is awesome because they have a new record, uh, Life in Your Glass World, that is about to drop in just a couple of days, right, Nick? Like 10 days? Some, something like that, yeah, exactly. So by the time this rig rundown goes live, you should be able to listen to the new record on all streaming platforms, you know, Spotify and all that stuff. So that's cool. Um, you guys changed things up so much for this record, so I guess we should start there. Like. Uh, the new record is just so dancey and, and fun. So what was the shift in songwriting like for this album in particular? Well, we had kind of toyed with, well, I guess first off, a good place to start is that Citizen is uh, expertly trained in disappointing our fans. <laughs> so, um, so every time uh, people like something, we're on to the next thing. Um, so we had kind of toyed with this, uh, you know, like that early 2000s, like New York City style on the last record in, you know, a really small amount. And uh, we just had a lot of fun doing it. And uh, this time around, it was just like kind of immediately the vibe. Um, and yeah, and it just, it shaped up like really easily. Everything kind of came together um, really quickly once we, we really got the ball rolling. Yeah, absolutely. It's still very cohesive. And it still maintains, you know, that citizen sound, which I think is really hard to do um, when, you know, you're, you're you're making a shift like you guys have. So good on you. That's awesome. Um, what was it like making a record at, at Matt's studio with Matt as opposed to, you know, going into the studio with somebody like Will Yip like you have in the past? Uh, there's definitely pros and cons. I mean, um, I would say a con is that we had unlimited time. I know that sounds to most people like a positive thing, but um, start to finish, it took us, um, you know, six times longer to make this record than it probably would have if we had studio time blocked out. Um, and in some ways that was good. I think that one thing that's very positive about it is that we approached each song individually this time around. Um, we didn't run like all the guitar, all the drums, like whatever. We uh, we did every song one by one, um, and that was just like allowed us to do very different things song to song. Um, so much so that we had to kind of consider like, all right, is this cohesive? Like we don't know, but uh, but it shook out really well. And um, you know, once we finally got to the finish line, uh, we were like, oh wow, we can. Uh, we can do this. This is an option now, you know? So yeah, we're really happy with it. Yeah, man. I mean, it's a, it's a great record. So I guess with that said, um, how much your gear changed? I know the last time that we talked, um, you were running an 800 and a couple of pedals and you guys are pretty much only playing Fender guitars from what I remember, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, most of the gear stayed the same. Uh, the, the JCM 800 is just, flat out, not going anywhere. <laughs> it's the best yeah. rock amp yeah. of all time, man. Yeah. 100%, so that's staying the same. Um, still running like mostly the same pedals. I know like a big thing we talked about before was that we're pretty low maintenance when it comes to pedals. Um, you know, a lot of junkers uh, here and there, you know, some cool stuff, but uh, I guess like the biggest change is uh, this guitar, which I did not have last time, which is an American Performer jazz master um i believe the last time we talked i had a cheapo jazz master um and i phased it out for one reason or another and i tried other guitars i got a um a 50s uh classic series stratocaster um which i liked but was so small that it looked like i was playing a toy 
<laughs> so uh, I needed to get a bigger boy in the mix. So uh, I got this jazz master just before we started the record. Um, and yeah, I, I really like it. So. Yeah, man. Have you uh, made any modifications to it or is it stock? No, right now it's stock. Um, and that's probably mostly because I've not had it very long. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll see as uh, touring begins and stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, for now, just stock, and it, it sounds great, and it plays better than any guitar I've had. So man, those I'm um, stoked on th that. those new uh, jazz masters I love because I, some people are really really good with that jazz circuit thing and know what they're doing and can get yeah. great tones. I'm not one of them. I'm kind of an idiot. <laughs> so yeah. like just getting rid of that altogether, like oh man, it just makes it. So much, yeah. I don't know, like easier to use, I guess, in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. what most people can probably put together via these things is that uh, we, we don't really know what we're talking about either. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I take a shot in the dark and I'm like, okay, I like, I like the way this guitar played and we'll uh, take a shot with another one. And uh, this, is, this is my biggest success story with uh, kind of buying guitars on a whim. <laughs> right on. So if, um, you know, when you start touring again, are you going to just tour with that and one backup or? Yeah, so, you know, generally our older songs, um, we have in a, a different tuning. So I usually bring a few guitars. Um, I've been rocking the same Telecaster for our older songs uh, since they came out. Um, probably time for me to phase it out. <laughs> uh, that one specifically is like, a really like I got in high school with no money you know it's very cheap but I just it's one of those things you know it just sticks with me um, and it's it's done me right so far so yeah you know I'm sticking with it but man a telly tellies are great it's classic dude I've played five thousand dollar tellies that I didn't feel played well and then I've played some squire tellies that were like oh holy shit this, <laughs> this actually plays really great yeah. you know yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy like that. Yeah. yeah. So, how are you compensating the difference between, um, you know, the 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 Tele Jangle single coil versus the yeah. J the JM pickups? I mean, is there much uh -huh. a ton of tonal difference, or are you kind of covering that up with effects and dirt? Yeah, I'm not compensating very well because <laughs> <laughs> because when we're when we're playing shows, it's uh, it's definitely a noticeable difference. But but yeah, you know, especially with the older stuff. Um, and I guess generally, like, the stuff before this current or this new album, um, there's a lot of effects, there's a lot of distortion, so everything kind of ends up getting buried a little bit. Sure, um, sure. I think that with this new stuff, I'm going to have to figure some things out, um, just because the, you know, the guitar tones specifically are extremely different from yeah. what we've done before. So yeah, yeah, it's big a lot, time. lot cleaner. Right, yeah, we, uh, we made a big effort to kind of strip back um, effects and uh, really go a little more raw this time around. So I think when we're um, figuring out like a live set, it's gonna be something that we have to consider and maybe have to adjust and kind of meet in the middle uh, just to make you know a cohesive set. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So I'm guessing when you guys go back on the road, you're going to be playing stuff from your entire catalog, not just mostly the new record, right? Generally, that's what we do. And I, yeah. I would imagine that it would probably be the same. But, you know, it's, it's hard to say, you know, because we don't really know the effects of the pandemic yet. Right. On, um, on you know, specifically like our sets or, or um, you know, people's hunger for, for citizens. So, um, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it could be the kind of thing where we're like, all right, we're going to hit, like, people haven't seen us in two years. we got to hit, uh, you know, a career spanning set list. Or it could be the kind of thing that we're like, we just have so much fun playing this new stuff and we really want to, like, devote our time to that. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, so real quick, you had mentioned your older songs were in a different tuning. Have you guys changed... Um, string gauges or anything to compensate and uh, what tunings were you using now we're in standard uh, and we've been in standard since the second album um, but the first album is in drop C uh -huh. which uh, is a huge pain in the ass <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah so I've been playing drop C on the telly uh, on the songs from youth uh, since 2013 and um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I just play... I, I play kind of thick anyway, so... Um, it, it seems to not, like, matter too much, but I would just rather be using one guitar. <laughs> yeah, I totally get that. I mean, drop, drop C to standard is quite a jump, you know, without, yeah, totally. like, a gauge change or an intonation or something like that. That's wild, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, right on, so... You got this awesome new Jazz Master. I love it. Very cool color. Uh, you got the 800 that you've had forever. Great amp. The Janus cabs I think you had before as well, right? Yep, yep. We've had those since 2014, I believe. Yep. And those look so fucking cool, man. Those guys make great uh, cabs. What, um, they're beautiful, yeah. What do you have in there? Is it vintage 30s or? Yeah, vintage yep. 30s. Yep. 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 Yeah, the vintage 30 with the 800 is kind of like the sound, man. Like if you're... Yeah, it's a... It's a match made in heaven. It really, sure. it really is. All right. So yeah. real quick, let's walk through your pedals because I know the yeah. last time we talked, you were running a ton of boss stuff, which makes sense because if you are touring as much as you guys did, um, you if something breaks, you can get it anywhere. You can just go to Guitar Center. Exactly. And, yeah. yeah. Is that kind of still that, your approach? Yeah, that's like a major thing. You know, um, I'm running a few electro harmonics now, um, but yeah, like more or less, we're very concerned with like, you know, I'm stomping on these things, and, and I mean, I don't have a very uh, neat setup as it is, so I, uh, I'm i pretty concerned with being able to just, like, swap things out uh, pretty easily. Um, specifically, I keep getting a Nano Holy Grail. Oh, those um, are great. And I love it. I love the way it sounds, but I've run through, like, five of them on tour uh, just because I use them so heavily and I'm stomping on them. Um, now, are you so, going? Are you going with the nano for the real estate on your pedal board, or is it uh, something specific about the tone of the the nano? Uh, no, just I think just uh, an accident. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of, kind of like oh, I'll take that, you know. Yeah, right on. I feel like I see a, a, a tube screamer back there. Maybe a, a boss chorus. Yeah. Yeah. Walk us through the signal chain. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I guess the newest additions is um, I've got this Electro Harmonic Synth 9 pedal, um, which we actually used uh, in some pretty like prominent parts on the record, um, rather than just using it for you know like slight effect or like a you know like a third guitar track, um, specifically on the song Blue Sunday. Yeah, I was um, I was gonna ask about that because you had me fooled. It sounds like synth. On the yeah, recording. There, I feel like a lot of people think there's like practically no guitar on the song, but actually, yeah, it's it's like mostly guitar, um, and we just ran it through this synth pedal, uh, which I really really love. I, I I'm really not sure what prompted me to get it, other than maybe like a YouTube video or something, but um, it just sounded really really cool, and uh, yeah, and so we we ran it quite a bit. Um, other than that, uh, I I would think that I would have had this last time, but I think we used it a little more. Is uh, the Electro Harmonics Pog? Yeah. Um, octave pedal. We uh, there's a few. Specifically, the first song on the record. There's a pretty evil uh, guitar riff that I used it on, um, and it just sounded amazing. And so I've I've been kind of working that into like more primary parts as well. Cool. Yeah, and it you know, it really fills out quite a bit of sound if you're the only guitar player right now. Like that's you know, that can compensate so much, especially that low octave really does some crazy shit, man. That's awesome. Yeah, totally. We we gotta turn things demonic here and there. You know, we're obviously having this conversation via Zoom right now, but um so I can only yeah. kinda see your board. But uh Tube Screamer, that's a perfect match Tube for an eight hundred. Yeah, Tube Screamer is the same and I'm I'm just you know, basically running it as a boost. So, um, right. that's, and that's been the same since 2013. Sure. Um, and I just can't find a reason to change that. I'm like, you know, it just is like the perfect thing. Citizen has constant, uh, quiet to loud, you know, clean to dirty. So yeah. that's like, that's like the perfect thing for me. Yep. Um, so we're still running that. Yeah. With, with that said, are you using, um, a volume pedal or, or are you just so, using using your potentiometer so, on your guitar 
you'll see on my pedal board that I do have a volume pedal. Uh, the problem with it is that it's broken. Ah, shit. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm, uh, yeah, technically I'm, technically I'm not using one, but, but I should be, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, you know, you see a lot of guys, especially like old blues dudes and stuff that are just constantly riding the volume on their guitar. But yeah. per personally, I think that would throw me the fuck off so hard. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't do two things at once. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're already asking a lot for me to even like use pedals and like play at the same time. So I can't do that. Um, other than that, uh, still the boss uh, DD3. Uh, digital delay, which I use uh, solely for noise. Um, oh, I just cool. have this the settings all wonky, um, and I just yeah, and I just like run it for chaos basically. Um, and yeah, that's that's been the same for a long time too. Can we can we hear that real quick? Yeah. Hopefully it's all set up. Yeah, it looks like it. Let's see. Yeah, just that's a, a lot fun, of that. That's yeah. a fun texture. You know, yeah. If I'm just, you know, it it works a lot for like transitional parts. You know, if oh I'm, for sure. Uh, if I just got to, especially if I got to like switch pedals, I'll just hit that, let it let it cause chaos, and do my thing with my pedals, and hit it off, and and we're ready to go. So S super it's fun. A, it's a cheat. Yeah, it's it's more of a. Uh, it's more of a crutch than, than anything. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have that Pog um, wired up right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's, I'd love to hear how you're using that. Yeah, <laughs> I had to hit the delay again. <laughs> oh man, pogs are so much fun. That's a great way to kill an afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah dude, totally. 100%. Yeah. Man, well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, we want to talk to Matt real quick because, you know, he had a lot to do with making this record and obviously it was a totally different approach than before. Um, but then we'll talk to your brother about bass stuff and wrap it on up. Thanks so yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. All right, next up we have Matt Karakis, who is the singer of Citizen. How is it going, it's man? It's going well. How about you? Man, I'm hanging in there. So your publicist mentioned to me that um, during quarantine, you've built your own studio um, to go in and <laughs> make this record. Uh, it's great to see you guys still staying creative. How much of a pain in the ass was that? And what was that process like? Um, it was a huge pain in the ass, honestly. <laughs> um, converting the garage, I mean, if it was just refinishing the existing garage, it wouldn't have been that big of a pain in the ass, but I was really concerned about soundproofing and I wanted to not bother the neighbors and I wanted to be able to, you know, play drums at 2 a.m. if I needed to. And so that was like a whole process. I mean, the, I think the biggest pain in the ass was the ducting because you can't just like cut holes in the walls and have vents every, you know what I'm saying? If you right, want it to right. be soundproof, so... So we essentially like built, we built another garage inside of the existing garage, you know, because a room in a room sure. is the best way to soundproof. So yeah, that it was a big pain in the ass, but, um, you know, it's worth it because we can just do whatever we want whenever we want, you know? So was recording like a, a passion born of you being a songwriter or is this something that you already had a background in and like... What was that transition like? Were you able to just like hop right in? Or oh what? yeah, I've been recording f for a very long time, um, just in um, you know bands that I've been playing in you know throughout my life. I just kind of learned how to record because I kind of like to be self sufficient with a lot of things I do and not really rely on other people. And um, we we've always kind of just dem used uh, my setup to demo, you know and everybody we all talked and we decided to kind of take it into our own hands this time and I thought it was a good decision because you know we had full creative control and uh, for the first time and that was pretty cool yeah you know? I mean it, and it sounds phenomenal so hats off you guys did a really killer job thank you yeah, it's because yeah. Mark Needham mixed it so he, he made it sound good I actually just handed him a pile of shit 
<laughs> and he he made it sound pretty good, so. <laughs> yeah, well, good on him. Good on him, man. It sounds amazing. Um, I guess it's worth noting that beyond Citizen, um, you also have a solo project, which is incredible. If you guys at home haven't heard it, you should definitely go check it out. It's actually so good that you kind of had me scared for a minute because uh, when I heard it, I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. This motherfucker's going to quit doing Citizen and just do a solo project. No way. No right. way. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Well, right on. So what's what's the songwriting process like for you? Um, are you just like banging out a demo on acoustic and showing the guys and then kind of building from there? Historically, Citizen, the songs kind of start on acoustic guitar. Yeah. And, um, you know, you write the song in, in that form and then build the rest of the music around it. But um, I feel like with Citizen, we're like pretty mid-tempo and um, we wanted to kind of shy away from that and do some faster paced stuff. So to um, avoid that, we started with the drums first. And so we, we would focus on the rhythm section and then build the music around that and do vocals last when usually it's like acoustic and vocals and then the rest of the song. So um, yeah, I think that created um, a really cool new version of Citizen that's never been explored before, you know, just simply by uh, rearranging, you know, what instrument you start with when writing a song. Interesting. Yeah, and like I said earlier, as much of a departure as the new record is, it still very much feels like Citizen, so what an interesting way to um, come into a new record by having like an exercise in songwriting. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I, I, I was, it, was, it was a lot of fun, honestly, because, um, you know, when you're just writing a song on acoustic and you're just like thinking of the vocals the whole time, um, the you know the only thing that really matters to you is like the lyrics and the melodies. But you know when you kind of like dump all your time into focusing on the music first, um, it was just it was just a new experience. I'm sure a million other people write songs like that, but you know it's, it was new to us and it was pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Were you tracking any of the guitar parts or adding anything or were you just kind of living it up to the guys? Um, no, everybody did their own parts. Cool. So, cool. Um, yeah, the whole album was really collaborative. Um, you know, for the most part, I'd like bloom a little idea. Um, usually it would just be like a verse and a chorus or something. And then I'd show it to everybody and we'd all kind of, you know, throw everyone's ideas into the into the pot and see what we got got from that you know how so, fun ev yeah yeah, yeah every, everybody was everybody did all their own things and it was pretty cool yeah yeah and like uh nick was saying like you guys had kind of a well a, a blessing and a curse of all the time in the world you're not paying for studio time because you're doing it yourself so like yeah you really take your time with it and fuck around and see what works yeah yeah that was good that was good and bad you know it t it took way longer and you know, if if anything happened in life that bummed one of us out, we would just not, we would just decide not to record. And I think you know there was a, a period of like I don't I don't remember if it was like it was like two to four weeks or something where I just I just didn't feel like recording and I just didn't, <laughs> you know. And I mean I'm the one running the running the gear to record, so you know we just literally nothing got done until I felt like it again, so. It was, uh, yeah, that was a good and a bad thing, but it, it was cool to be able to, you know, just like go home after you're done recording rather than, um, like, you know, just staying at some random house in Pennsylvania, you know, or whatever. So yeah, absolutely. That was cool. <laughs> Well, Matt, man, I can't tell you like how much I appreciate you guys t taking the time to do this, but um, also your voice, dude. God damn, you can sing like an angel. I love it. <laughs> um, how <laughs> Sometimes. Did, how did you discover your falsetto? Is that something that you've just naturally been able to do, or is that something like you worked on and went to I lessons? I think the and shit? first time I ever messed around with the falsetto is when I was writing. Uh, me and Nick were writing a song called "The Summer," and. Um, I had the melody for the course and it was way too high. There was no way I could shout it or sing it. So I was just like, oh, I guess I'll just falsetto it. And then that was, that was like the first time I realized like, oh wow, I can hit much higher notes if I just go to the head voice, you know? And right. I don't even know if I do it right. I just kind of went for it and uh, 
it sounded how it sounded, and now I do it all the time. So <laughs> happy accidents, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, it worked. It worked out, but I don't know if my technique's right. I remember I was. I had this friend Sam, and he wanted to do a cover with me, and and I had to like. I don't think it ever ended up getting posted, but I was like doing a falsetto, and he kept saying I was doing it wrong. Like you're doing it wrong. You're doing the falsetto wrong. And this was after we released Youth. And I was like, well, I don't know. I don't really know. Like, this is just how I do the fake falsetto, I guess. You know? So. <laughs> well, I mean, it sounds awesome to me. I'm no vocal coach, but I think you nailed it, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> right on. Well, I guess we'll talk to Eric real quick before we let you guys go. But um, congratulations on the new record, man. It sounds great. And I can't wait to see you live. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'll give it to Eric. All right, last up, we have Eric Ham. How's it going, Eric? Good to see you again, bud. Yeah, good to see you again, too, this time uh, via Zoom, but it's something. It's, it's getting us out there. Until uh, we can safely get back to shows, this is better than nothing, man. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'll it's take it. See I'll, I'll take it. Well, shit, yeah, man. Um, I think you had this bass uh, in our first rig rundown, um, the yep. Jaguar, right? Yep. Yeah, we got the Jaguar. Uh, it's kind of been my... Uh, I guess most well-rounded bass, so we've used it a bunch for the recording. We use a couple uh, P basses as well, but this is kind of my uh, my favorite, and it's been that way. I mean, since we talked last time. Yeah. Are you running any kind of backup? Have you changed anything to that bass to compensate for some of the, like you know the newer record has uh, a lot of it, it's a bit of a tonal departure. I basically what I do to all my basses is just add a badass bridge. Yeah. And I just, helps with the uh, sustain and sounds a little beefier but other than that it's kind of just I guess pretty stock to it kind of just mess with the tone knob and for each song it has a little different taste to it so we just kind of mess with that and obviously with the pedals it goes a long way yeah totally and um last time we talked you were playing some sort of a Fender bass amp right but you've switched it up yeah yeah so last time we talked I had the uh, Fender 800 and was using that for a while then actually on a tour kind of went back to what i'm using now which is the sans amp power amp combo and uh i've been using that it's uh it's like kind of funny going tours and everyone has their amp eggs or fender amps and i'm like oh yeah i just run a sans amp and power amp and always kind of blows people away but it sounds great and actually the fender 800 that i had last time got stolen oh shit. out of our practice spot so that is one reason why you will not be seeing it but um but yeah, unfortunately we got our practice spot broken into and luckily I had this with me because I absolutely love just the Sans Amp RBI and power. Man, amp, I've so. always been a huge fan of the Sans Amp stuff. I've uh, played in bands where we had like, you know, an SVT go down or something and we had to run the Sans Amp just direct to front of house and it, you know, it actually kind of worked. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've, we've done that multiple times. You just use the DI straight out of the back and just let it rip. We've done it without an amp or without a cab, basically every which way. So yeah, we've been decently lucky, but I've played multiple shows, just plugged straight out of the Sands amp. And uh, I remember one time we were in Canada and that happened and just did it and we put a monitor near you and just let it rip. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude, I love the simplicity of that. And um, <laughs> as far as pedals, you got a pretty Spartan rig, right? Like you don't have a ton of stuff going on on your feet, right? Yeah, just kind of one line across. Uh, we always have the rat, which we use a lot. And um, that one, we just kind of, every song is just dialed dialed in for whatever it needs. So if it needs a little bit more distortion for some of the heavier songs, sure. we have it on. And even some of the softer songs, we still use it, which is kind of cool. And it's just very versatile. You can just dial it back and still get a nice, well-rounded tone. So because like, you know, the Sans Amp can get pretty gnarly too. Um, are you ever using that for distortion or are you just kind of leaving that all up to the rat? Um, so uh, obviously when recording uh, for Life in Your Glass World, we did, I mean, you'll kind of mess with things a bit uh, on the amp, but for live, I just kind of find a sweet spot that's pretty well-rounded for every song. And then that's what the rat comes in for is just dialing in basically that crunch to it. Gotcha, yeah. All right, let's talk about modulation effects because, you know, even going back as far as like, Youth, you guys had some pretty heavy verb going on on that album. Uh, so what do you got going on now? We actually added, at, oh my gosh, we added the Fender uh, Trey verb to it. 
In that one, uh, I really like the plate reverb on it. So for a lot of the dreamy parts, we will mess with that. And for some alternative versions, you might hear it come out a little bit, but that's a, a newer addition that is a big help to the pedal. Board. Yeah, I'm kind of digging those new Fender pedals. It seems like those enclosures are uh, very like roadworthy, like substantial. Yeah, yeah, they're really nice. They obviously now it doesn't really matter, but hopefully it matters again soon as they have little LEDs on the pedals so you can see everything, which is a big help, yeah. Which is funny too with my Rat. It's a 92 Rat, which is the first one that they added a bulb to, which I can't imagine playing without it. I guess there's, yeah, there's definitely been times you you might stomp on it and all of a sudden I look back and I'm like, oh, the light's still on, I should probably go, go yeah. click that again. So the lights definitely help though. Yeah, I totally get that. So what's that um what's that yellow pedal on your board? So that's an un unpleasant companion and that's just uh we use that in like death dance for uh underlying layer and that just helps us really get fuzz. It's a pretty noisy pedal too, so yeah, it it gives us more of like a blown out sound, which is cool, and you'll see that in the opening track Death Dance where it just kind of is just blown out. Like a lot of times if you like if I'm not playing it's still screeching itself. So it's kind of like takes the fuzz to like a limit basically yeah yeah totally just it's <laughs> sonic annihilation how fun yeah. yeah all right and then beyond that it's just the tuner right yeah beyond that's the the good old poly tune so damn you gotta we're, we're still learning how to use that but you guys you guys have one remarkably day. uh straightforward simple <laughs> rigs for as many um you know tonal variations you're getting out of these records and live yeah I mean, you know <laughs> yeah uh I'd like to say we kind of just find a blend in. That's the cool thing about the bass too, is I, and I think a lot of people like that, is that we have a driving bass a lot of the times. Yeah. So even in some of the more mellow songs, you'll still hear a pretty driving bass, which is cool. <laughs> yeah, man, especially that new record, it is so dancey. Yeah, I, I love it too. <laughs> Anything that makes me want to move is, yeah, is awesome. Man. So it, it makes me very, very excited for live shows again, because uh, I can't, Wait to shake my ass to that stuff, dude. It's so fun. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. I'll hold you to that. Absolutely, man. <laughs> Until that day comes, I hope you guys stay super safe. Um, you know, I've seen some festivals and, and shows being booked, you know, maybe starting in like September, like there's Furnace Fest and Riot Fest and Punk Rock Bowling and stuff. Do you guys have anything lined up? Anything on So the basically book? everything since quarantine started, just kind of you keep hearing things and they keep pushing everything back. Totally. Um, I mean, there's always hopes that the next one works out. So, I mean, you never know. Hopefully everyone can get a vaccine soon and we can get back out there. And that's basically it now. Just kind of like a waiting game. And I'm sure you'll see everyone get out there as soon as possible. But we'd love to be back out playing shows. Oh, here I, soon. Dude, I'd love to be out vaccine shows. This, uh, this whole two-week quarantine turning into a year thing fucking blows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to to walk us through all this stuff. Tell Matt and your brother I said hi. Um, if people are not really familiar with Citizen watching this rig rundown, where would you want them to start? Just start with the new stuff. It's our uh, favorite things that we've done to date, and uh, it's all up on Spotify and everything like that. So Black and Red, uh, Blue Sunday, and I Want to Kill You, all up now. <laughs> Such funny song titles for uh, happy sounding yeah, music. Yeah, I Want to Kill You was a working title, and then it, it stayed. So we were like, we're not getting rid of that. Yeah. I love that. All right, well, you heard the man. So go listen to that new record when it comes out. Um, if you like that, go all the way back and start with Youth. It's one of my favorite records, uh, even if it's like, you know, maybe not your, the, your favorite release ever. <laughs> I've heard it enough. I've heard it enough, yeah. I can imagine that, but I love that record. So go listen to it if you haven't already. Um, other than that, stay tuned for more rig rundowns, riff rundowns, video lessons, all that fun stuff. See you guys later.